So it's been a while since I did an episode. Uh, just life got in the way. I had to work. I had a very busy time. And then I had family come. But I'm happy to be back. I'm happy to help you with some English. We're going to do level pre-1 vocabulary today. We're going to continue on from where we left off. We're going to do question 5 and 6. So let's read this. Police must follow strict something at a crime scene to make sure the evidence is not damaged or altered in any way. So let's make sure we understand all the words here. Strict, I think you know, you learn that usually pretty early on. Strict is when you, uh, very serious, very almost harsh way of following something. So we talk about parents being very strict. So my father's very strict. He would make sure I did my homework and he was very, uh, very serious about the rules. Uh, crime scene, those words kind of go together. Crime, I think you might know. A scene is the place it happened. So the crime scene is where the crime happened. You see this a lot. This is a very good one if you watch a lot of detective movies or TV shows or police dramas. Someone gets murdered in this room. This room is now the crime scene. Maybe this house is where the crime happened. This house is the crime scene to make sure the evidence... Evidence is very important for police dramas. This is what the police look for to find a clue to be able to say this person committed the crime, that person committed the crime, this person is guilty, this person is innocent. So it might be I was doing a bad thing and some of my hair fell out. They take my hair and they get the DNA from my hair and then they can say, oh, the man from Sounds Great English committed this crime. I've never committed a crime. It's not damaged or altered. <laughs> My voice. <clears throat> altered in any way. Altered just means changed. So if we're looking for hair or fingerprints or something like that, you have to make sure nothing's been touched. Make sure other people don't come in and change things. Altered just means changed. So let's look at the vocabulary words. Tributes, protocols, reservoirs, and portions. We're going to look at the singular first, a tribute. Because the plural doesn't really change it for this. A tribute. Uh, actually, it should be a tribute. Oh, is something you make show or offer to glorify. That might be a hard word. Well, that's a little difficult already. So I'm trying to think examples are always better. A tribute is something you make, show, or offer to glorify someone. If you go back a long time, people would give a tribute to the gods. Food as a tribute to their ancestors. This is a very common practice in many cultures. Maybe there's a special day where you remember your grandparents and anyone who's come before you. And what you do is you have a dinner and you put out food. And that food is a tribute to the people who are dead, who are the people, the ancestors in your family. Ancestors is anyone in your family history. Uh, a lot of times, tributes would be given to gods. So I want to make sure... I should type that out as well. A tribute of two cows to God. Hoping, yeah. So we'll give the, we'll try to simplify this, but this is two kinds of tribute. They're very similar, but one, if you do it to a God, it's kind of more serious. If you do it to your ancestors, it's kind of to mem for a memory. Uh, when they do the Oscar ceremony, they will have people who've died recently. They'll make a video of their life, some of their best moments. And that's a tribute to say, oh, weren't they a great person? We really liked the work they did. So let's check this one. Let's do this one first. On this day, people give or offer 
food to the oh, memory of their family that came before them. On this day, people give food as a tribute to their ancestors. On this day, people give food to the memory of their family that came before them. The village gave a tribute of two cows to a god, hoping for a good harvest. Okay. The village gave a tribute of two cows to God, hoping for a good harvest. Now this means they probably had something and they would kill the cows and give them to God. Uh, in old movies, they used to throw things into volcanoes, hoping the volcano would not erupt. The village gave two... Oh. Two cows to the God to make them happy. So they're giving the cows to the God saying, here's something we're giving to you to make you happy so that you give us lots of food this year. So they would have a good harvest. Let's do one more. So during the Oscar ceremony, they played a tribute to the actor who had died that year. So during the Oscar ceremony, so the Oscars is an award ceremony for movies. During the Oscar ceremony, they played a tribute. This would be a video that they play on a screen for everyone to watch maybe some of the best moments of that actor's career. The actor had died, they all want to remember them. They want to say, wasn't, weren't they such a great person? Weren't they such a great actor? who died that year. So during the Oscar ceremony, they played a video to remember all the best work of the actor who died that year. So this isn't giving something to the person. It's actually making something to show how much you love the actor. So this means the meaning has changed a little bit depending on how you use it. If you use it more in history, it's to gods, it's for praying, it's kind of religion. If you do a modern one, it's going to be we make something to remember the person. And it's going to remember how great they were. All right, so let's go on to the next word. Protocols. Protocol kind of just means rules. It's actually pretty simple. I was about to say the police. That kind of gives away the answer. There are serious protocols to enter the clean room. Oh, clean room. A clean room, this is often with computers. They have a room where you can't have any dust. So before you go in the room, you have to put on a suit that covers your whole body so that you get no skin comes off and no hairs come off. Uh, you go into this room and you do, don't want to bring any dust with you. You don't want to have anything get into the machines. So usually you put on a suit or you go into a special room and the doors close and they spray you. And then you can go into the room. It's called a clean room. There are serious rules you must follow to enter the clean room. You could also say procedures. Procedures just means the steps you have to follow. I think that's actually it. Rules or procedures. So you probably have, if you go to work, you probably have a protocol where you have to go to work and then you have a card and you beep something and that shows that you punched in. That's a very simple low level protocol. If you have government things or military things, or in this case, science things, the protocols become much more serious because if you don't follow them, you could break someone. <laughs> you could break something or hurt someone. So I think that's not bad for that. Reservoir. Reservoir equals 
water you keep. So usually it's water. A reservoir would be something you can, you can do this for other things, but mainly the most simple one, a reservoir is like something, you have a city and the city is in a dry place like Los Angeles or Las Vegas. They're in a desert basically. So they have to keep water and to keep that water so that people have water they can use during the summertime when it doesn't rain, when there's no water. So that's reservoir is water you keep. This is a very common sentence you'll see now. Um, I keep touching both keys, empty. The city's reservoir was almost empty after the first month of summer. The city's water that they keep for emergencies. It's actually just extra, but that's okay. Was almost empty after the first. So this is like Los Angeles again. They have to keep water because it's so dry in the summertime. And because of climate change, because of the problems they have with the environment, that water just isn't there anymore. So it's become a big problem in these kind of cities. So next one, portion. Uh, we usually use this. What do we usually use it for? We usually use it for food. So you have a uh, big, you know, the, the, the food for everybody. And then I get part and then you get part and then someone else gets part. That's your portion. That's a part of the food that you get. That's probably how we'd use it the most. Everyone got two slices of pizza. Uh, that's... There wasn't enough food for everyone, so we gave smaller portions. Hmm. So there wasn't enough food for everyone, so we gave smaller portions. There wasn't enough food. <laughs> food for everyone, so we gave them less we gave less to each person so this doesn't actually use the word part but we gave less of less a smaller part of the food to each person so everyone got some but they all got less so portion is going to be part uh let's so let's look at the word police must follow strict tributes memories something they have to give to someone else at a crime scene no Police have to follow strict rules at a crime scene? I think yes. Uh, reservoir, the water they keep in the background? No, police must follow strict portions? That doesn't make sense. Police must follow strict rules at a crime scene to make sure the evidence is not damaged or altered in any way. So this one, police must follow strict protocols at a crime scene. All right, the next one, the umpire. Something, the two players for fighting. So the two players were fighting each other, maybe just shouting, uh, but they're not supposed to do that. They were not allowed to play in the rest of the game. So the umpire, because they were fighting, they were not allowed to play. So they're punishing them somehow. So slaughtered, okay, administered, ejected, and conceived. So let's go start with slaughtered. Slaughter means to kill. It's kind of used for two different ways. Slaughter means to kill animals for food. And then slaughter. Oh, I don't need to put means if I'm putting equal. Slaughter means to kill someone 
in a violent way. So when we talked about people fighting, uh, when you talk about wars and things, you could say that this group slaughtered this other group. It means they killed them all. It's very violent. But we use it like you, you slaughter cows, you slaughter pigs for killing them for food. So these cows are going to be slaughtered tomorrow. So yeah, I don't need to type all that out again. These cows are going to be killed for food tomorrow. Uh, I don't really want to do violent sentences, but I guess I have to. If they're using slaughter on the test, I have to explain it all the ways you can use it, but I actually don't want to give a bunch of sentences like this. So to kill someone in a violent way, to slaughter. Um, So it's going to be the people of the village were slaughtered by, by the military. So this would be you have a military that's, you know, trying to kill all the people in the country. This happens sometimes. Uh, this is always going to be very awful, very ugly, very violent. The people in the village were Killed in a violent way, way by the military. Uh, there's not much else to say about it. It's just, yeah, this is just one of the many words we use for to kill, uh, but it gives a feeling, and the feeling is pretty awful. Like, this is the worst way you could kill people. The, the villagers, because I'm talking about a village, the people in the village, they don't have guns, they can't fight back, and the people in the military... They have guns and they have helmets and things and they're just killing everyone and it's very easy for them. It makes it very awful. Okay. Administer. So the principal. Admin, oh, wait, wait, I didn't do the example first. Administer. Administer. It means to do. I actually want to check this. So let's just check really careful that I make it get it right. Administer. Yeah, to manage. So I administer other people and it's also to give. All right, so that was what I thought. Administer is to manage or to give. All right, so yes, I, I, was, I just have to be careful that I don't make mistakes so that you don't make mistakes. Uh, I administer the school. Actually, again, let's make it more clear. Just who is I? The principal administers the school. And then we can just swap that word for manage and it will make sense. So the principal is the person, he's in charge of the school, he tells people what to do, he has his staff, he has the students, he has teachers, he has other things he has to take care of. He's taking care of a lot of things. We have a lot of people we just call administers. That's their job is to just do things. So I was also going to use the principal for this other one. A punishment to the boys. So the boys did something wrong. So the principal administered the punishment. So the principal in this case gave oh, that. Uh, a punishment to the boys. So the boys did something wrong and the principal said, well, here you have to, uh, when I got in trouble when I was in school, often I would give me a piece of paper, you have to write, sounds great, English is the best English teaching site in the world. And write that 500 times. <sighs> And you'd have to do it by hand. So I had to do that once or twice. I was not a good boy all the time. All right, so we can go back here. Eject. All right, so 
eject. To take out. It's more, it's a little stronger than that. To take out, because it's not, because I think when you have a DVD or a CD or something like that and you eject it, that means it comes out. Or to force out, to send out. Because I'm thinking about I all the, the, when we use eject the most, it would be a player of some sort, and you've put a cassette tape or a CD or a DVD or something like that into it, and then when you eject it is when you take it out. Okay, so let's add that. Make sure we get all of them. But I think for me the feeling is not just me taking it. It's uh, when I have a DVD player, you press the eject button and it goes boo and it comes out for me and then I can take it. And it has sort of that feeling. Like it's not just 100% me. Maybe I should check the dictionary on that one as well. To throw out, to throw out, to evict from property. Now I'm thinking about spy cars. So James Bond car, they always have a button in the seat, ejects. It's called the ejector seat, and it shoots it out of the ceiling. Let's put all these sentences up, because I actually think I'm getting a few too many. Uh, let's start with the, the... To get the DVD out of the player, you have to press... Hmm. Press this button... Wah. And it will eject. In the, uh, I don't think, because that's just in the movies. They don't have, oh, no, 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 because they do it in airplanes. The fighter pilot had to eject from his airplane when it started to crash. Huh. So these are pretty good. Because uh, this is how we use it most of the time for like DVD players and stuff. But this is very rare. We don't talk about it. But this is actually more the feeling. Eject should be actually quite strong. Go, but in real life, when I eject this DVD from a DVD player, I press the button, it doesn't poof, and hit me. It just goes poof, very gentle. So this one is very violent. It's very strong, and this one's very gentle. So, or it should be. If it does it too hard, it actually is broken. So let's just do that. The, to get the DVD player out of the player, to get the DVD out of the player, press this button and it will come out. The fighter pilot had to eject from his airplane so this one's more difficult. The fighter pilot had to a button and shoot his seat out of the top of the airplane when it started to crash. Good. Okay, so I had to fix that sentence a little bit. So the fighter pilot had to press a button. So he was flying and then something goes wrong and he presses a button and then usually in the movies they pull something and then the top of the airplane comes off and they shoot into the sky. The fighter pilot had to press a button and shoot his seat out of the top of the airplane when it started to crash. So that is the very strong version of eject, which is I think how the word is used. So when I looked at the dictionary here, it's using it for very strong, using physical force. That means push or authority or influence. Okay, so let's go back here. And the last one, conceive. Equals to make, usually for, uh, to have an idea for the first time. To make something new. Okay, so the simplest one actually is to make a baby. So the parents conceived after their honeymoon. 
Mm -hmm. when, the, when the parents conceived on their honeymoon. So this is actually very simple uh, on their honeymoon. Actually, we should change it to the couple. Because they're not parents until after they make the baby. So the couple made a baby on their honeymoon. So that's very simple. The scientist conceived of a new way to make fuel. While watching, uh, that's not that's not very good. The scientist conceived of a new way to make fuel while studying space. So, this maybe is a little confusing at first. Yeah. Okay. So the scientist had a new idea of a way to make fuel while studying space. So the idea is that he's studying something, not how to make fuel. He's studying something in space. Maybe the some, something looks, the way it, something moves, and that gives him a new idea. And he goes, oh, with this new idea, I could make something. So it's having an idea, but a new idea in the moment. So that's not terrible. Oh, let's get, go back here. The umpire, something, the two players for fighting, they were not allowed to play for the rest of the game. The umpire slaughtered the two players for fighting. Whoa, that's a lot. It means he killed the two players for fighting, but they were not allowed to play in the rest of the game. That means they did not die. So that one actually grammatically does make sense. It's too much, but it does make sense. The umpire killed the two players for fighting, but I don't think that's what really happened. The umpire administered the two players. Well, you couldn't use administered by itself. The uh, umpire administered punishment to the two players for fighting. That sentence would make sense. But administered by itself, you have to administer something. So like the principal administers the school. He manages the school. Uh, I administered, what was the other sentence? Yeah, the principal administered a punishment. So he had to do something to the players. So that one doesn't work. The umpire ejected the two players for fighting. That would mean he sent them out. So they had to leave the stadium. They had to leave the baseball game. They were not allowed to play the rest of the game. So that one makes sense. They don't go, Psh, but he's like, with my power as the umpire, I am making you leave the stadium. And then the umpire conceived the two players. Well, he did not have two new players and he didn't have them because they were fighting. So it's not that last one. So it, he ejected them. So the umpire ejected the two players for fighting. They were not allowed to play for the rest of the game. So that is questions five and six. We're going to stop there. I will do seven and eight. I'm going to try to keep this more regular. I'm thinking doing it once every two weeks to make sure I can keep a regular schedule. But I might start trying to make longer videos. Also, if you have a question or comment, well, you can send it to soundsgreatenglish at gmail.com. So if you have a question about English, if you have a question about something, you can put it in the comments. I actually had someone write something in the comments the other day, and, that, uh, and I answered that. It was actually about Taylor Swift lyrics. I'm thinking about doing a special episode just for that, doing some song lyrics and translating them into simple English. But if you have a question about any English stuff, send it to soundsgreatenglish at gmail.com. Maybe I, be, I can answer your email. Maybe I will make it into an episode and we'll put it on YouTube. And thank you very much.